In a previous video, one of the formulas that we talked about was the expectation of a function of a random variable. And this is the formula for a continuous random variable. All we did was we plugged that function of the random variable in, we multiplied it by the PDF, and we integrated it over all possible realizations for the random variable. Now, in this video, I want to introduce the idea of covariance. To understand what covariance is, we need to understand how to, how to compute the expectation of a function of a random vector. So we need to generalize this formula to allow more inputs into the function. So let's consider the random vector x and y. Um, and this is, a, this is going to have a joint distribution. And it's going to have some marginals. Now suppose that we had a function of this random vector. The function is g of x and y. It takes two inputs and spits out one output. We want to know what the expectation of a function like this is, we can use a similar formula to the one that we used in the univariate case. Now because we have two random variables, what we need to do is we need to integrate out both of those variables. Um, so all we do is we replace g of x and y for g of x, and we replace the joint distribution of x and y uh, for the marginal distribution of x. So if we want to compute the expectation of a function of a random vector, this is the formula. If you have more elements to your random vector, you have more integrals and you have more arguments to your function. Now let's consider one such function of this random vector. And when we use this function, the resulting expectation is the covariance between x and y. The, the repeated use of expectations in there um, is a bit, of, a bit cumbersome. So one thing we can do to make the expression look a little bit more friendly is to denote the expectation of a random variable as the Greek letter mu sub that random variable. There are several interesting and very useful properties of covariances. First useful property of covariances is that the covariance of a random variable with itself is just the variance. So we write out the uh, expectation version of the covariance and then what you see is in, inside here this is going to be the expectation of x minus its expectation squared and that's exactly what we had for our formula for the variance of a random variable. A second useful property is that covariance of x with y is the same as the covariance of y with x. This one doesn't take much to verify except for just to look at the formula here and the fact that we can switch the order of multiplication uh, within this expectation basically completes the proof of that property. The next nice property we have is if we have a linear function of one of these random variables and we covary that with the other random variable, all that matters is the slope in that linear function. Um, so uh, we can go ahead and verify that. So the first things first, we know some things about the expectation of a linear function, that those are also linearly related. So we can plug in, uh, into our covariance, uh, this first element here. Instead of x, we have a plus bx. Instead of mu of x, we have a plus mu x. So we go ahead and do that, and we get this expression in the first part of the covariance. And the second part of the covariance is the same. Now examining inside this expectation, we can cancel the a's. Now the remaining terms inside these square brackets all have a b, and so we can bring the b outside of those remaining terms. All we're doing here is with this expectation is we have a double integral, and we're integrating over x and y. b doesn't depend on either x or y, and so we can bring it outside of that double integral, and then what remains is the covariance of x and y. And so that shows this, uh, this useful property of covariances. So a final nice property of covariances that we could use is the computational form for covariances. Just like the computational form for variances, computational form for covariances comes from just multiplying out the terms inside this expectation. So we're going to go ahead and use FOIL, first, outer, inner, and last. Now this is just a function of x and y. These mu's you can think of as constants. And if you think of this expectation as an integral, the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. So we can break this expectation up into each of its respective parts. 
The next thing that we'll notice is that this is a constant. So just like in that previous derivation when we brought the constant outside of the double integral, we can do that again. And this is a constant, so we can bring this mu x out of this double integral. Now let's go ahead and rewrite this on the next line. So now we have a mu x here, and we have a mu y here. This term is a minus mu x times mu y. This term is a minus mu x times mu y. And this is a plus mu x times mu y. One of these cancels with the positive here, and we're left with one negative mu x times mu y. And so there we have a computational form for covariance. You can compute the, co the expectation of x times y. That's just a function of the random vector. Uh, it's going to be simpler to compute than uh, something where you have some subtraction in there for most practical purposes. And then you just subtract off the means times each other.